wife, they have children, they are taking care of uh, Gurukul near the temple. It's outside the temple facility. They have about uh, 10, 15 students, full-time students, uh, staying there. Very nice. So going quite nicely. The temple also. I, I was also in Pokhara and uh, we had a kirtan with the help of some strong devotees there. If you want to, you know, maybe when you come next time, I will take you there or you can go there. Yeah, yeah. I want to go. I've never been to Pokhara. Yeah. It's a very nice place, man. And uh, we had some land there and we built a building and on the top floor. We are using it as a, as a temple. We did some kirtan. I mean, we have a room right now, but, you know, that's the land over the years. Okay. So, Very nice. You can come or in any devotees can come, they are welcome. Mm. <laughs> Look forward to that when they open the borders. <laughs> I think Nepal also have co quite a bit of COVID though. There yeah, been... it was increasing. The, actually, according to the percentage, it was more than India. You know, population percentage-wise, it was increased a lot. And then now, uh, you know, last, uh, they locked down completely for over, over I think, almost uh, 10 days. And then now it's become better. It's, you know, it's decreasing under control. Did you take the injection, the, the vaccine? No, Maaz, I could not take because they want us to take the first dose and then the second dose. So, you know, if I take the first dose, I don't know if I'm here for second dose and, you know, save my talk here over there in Thailand. So uh, I, I was, you know, I was stuck kind of, you know, I didn't take either one of them. But I, I had gone to Pokhara and when I came back, there was a lockdown. And I came by the, you know, there was hardly any transportation and I think I also got it, you know. I, I was sick for a few days, but I was just, you know, staying home, resting and then, but uh, I'm, I'm fine now. I didn't check, but I think I also contracted. I was a little sick for a few days and then. I just did some yoga and breathing and then I think I'm better. Yeah, that's, I did a lot of yoga and a lot of breathing too. To, yeah, to, I think to that's, that's the, that's help the me recover. recover. <laughs> okay, so I think we have to begin. Yes, yes, ma'am. Thank you for your uh, association and sorry for disturbance to all the devotees also. I will translate into Nepali today. Okay, very good. Om Magyana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Kauravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschacha Deshatarine Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Atvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasade Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we welcome everyone to our ongoing study of the Bhagavad Gita under the direction of His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. So first we'll read a verse from the Gita Mahatmya. Right. Devaki Nandana Krishna Gita Patena Tushyati Yatana Vadir Danena Yagna Tirta Vrata Debi. The son of Devaki, the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna, cannot be satisfied by anyone's study of the Vedas, charity, sacrifice, pilgrimage, or vows as much as he is satisfied by the devotional recitation of the Gita.
บอกว่าบุตรของเดวกีพร้อมเจ้าสตรีกฤษณะทรงไม่พึงพอใจกับกับการที่ผู้คนจะกับการที่บุคคลเนี่ยศึกษาพระเวทการให้ทานการไปสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์การให้คําปฏิญาณแต่พระองค์จะทรงพึงพอพระทัยมากกับบุคคลที่ตั้งใจแล้วก็อุทิศตนในการท่องพระคัตคิตาศึกษาพระคัตคิตา So today we're going on to chapter 14 the three modes of material nature We have Okay. We heard in chapter 13 that one gets happiness and distress according to his association with the modes of nature. So Lord Krishna is going to explain to us more about the modes of nature and how they influence us. Verse number one. The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Again, I shall declare to you this supreme wisdom, the best of all knowledge, knowing which all the sages have attained the supreme perfection. So Lord Krishna says this is the best of all knowledge. But Lord, Lord Krishna has already spoken Rajavidya, the king of knowledge, and he gave us also the most confidential knowledge. So when Krishna said this is the best of all knowledge, we should understand this is the best of all knowledge in relation to the modes of nature. It's important for us to understand when the modes of nature are affecting us. Often a person is not aware how he is being influenced by the material energy. So Lord Krishna is going to help us to identify how we are influenced by the material nature. Verse number 4 of chapter 14 is a very well-known verse. I'll chant the Sanskrit. Sarva yoneshu konteya murtaya sambhavantiya tasham brahma mahadyone aham bija pradapita. It should be understood that all species of life, O son of Kunti, are made possible by birth in this material nature, and that I am the seed-giving father. So if we understand this verse properly, we can see how we, all living entities are brothers and sisters. We have the same father, Lord Krishna. Krishna. 
and we're born from the material nature. Material nature is like the mother. And this is true for all species of life. So we should have proper respect for all different forms of life. And we should also understand that life does not simply come from material nature alone. Just like a woman cannot give birth to a child on her own. There has to be the, the seed giving father. So the same is true within this world, material world. There's the seed giving father and the material nature is like the mother. So we take our birth in this material nature according to our karma, according to our past deeds. We will take a particular body. But all the different species of life are coming through the same method in the material world. There's the father, Krishna, and the mother, material nature. Going ahead to text number five, Lord Krishna describes material nature consists of three modes, goodness, passion and ignorance. When the eternal living entity comes in contact with nature, O mighty armed Arjuna, he becomes conditioned by these modes. So you can see, uh, let's look at some of these different uh, pictures which are here because they help us to understand more about the modes of nature. You can see that there are three colors, just like we have three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. So similarly for an artist who's a painter, they will use three colors. So three primary colors are red, yellow and blue. And from the combination of these three colors in different ways, we can make many, many colors. So the same is true of the different living entities in the material world. There are many different combinations of the modes of nature. It's not that all living entities are one mode of nature only. You, you can't say everyone is 
this person is the mode of goodness, that person is the mode of passion, that person is the mode of ignorance. No, they're a mixture of different modes. Hmm. Just like when you mix the blue and the yellow kit together, then you get green, right? And when you mix the red and the yellow together, then you get orange. And so different combinations of colors produce different shades of color. So there are three modes of nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. Or in Sanskrit they're called sattva, rajas and tamas. And all different species of life, all different living entities and actually everything in the material world is influenced by these three modes. The water which we drink, the sound vibration where we live is influenced by the modes of nature. The food we eat, the clothes we wear are all influenced by the modes of nature. So we come in contact with the material nature and we become conditioned by it. We, st we start to think that this is what I like, this is very nice, this is my life. And just like the soul is put into the body of a pig and the pig is happy in the pig pig house eating pig food. The pig does not think he's suffering, he's thinking, I'm happy, I have my pig family, I get pig food, I'm happy. So the three modes condition people in different ways. We will look to see how they condition people. First of all, the mode of goodness. Text number six. Text number six describes, O oh, sinless one, the mode of goodness being purer than the others is illuminating and it frees one from all sinful reactions. Those situated in that mode become conditioned by a series of happiness and knowledge. A, a sense, not a see, a sense of happiness and knowledge. <laughs> And we're giving some examples of people in the mode of goodness. The examples are the Brahmana, a scientist, a philosopher, or a poet. Uh, 
หรือคนดีบุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับนี้นะคะก็คือพรามนะคะนักปลาแล้วนักวิทยาศาสตร์ So people who are in the mode of goodness, they in, they have this sense of happiness and knowledge. No, happiness and knowledge are not wrong, but if we become attached to these things, it's not good. And often it happens that someone who is in the mode of goodness, they think they are superior. They think they are better than other people who are not in, and who are maybe in the mode of passion and in the mode of ignorance. Uh, they're thinking, I'm high class. I have knowledge. I'm educated. We don't feel the concern for others. So the mode of goodness is certainly to be encouraged, but we should not become attached. To just simply being happy and having knowledge. We see the Brahmana is supposed to be a symbol of the mode of goodness. He's supposed to live a pure life. And we often find today in modern times we find less brahmanas. We find more scientists. The brahmanas become scientists rather than brahmanas. So scientists are always trying to improve the material condition of life. Then you have philosophers who like to speculate and dis discuss the nature of the world. And poets are they have the ability to use their language to describe conditions in the material world. So such people are supposed to be symbols of the mode of goodness. Text number seven describes people in the mode of passion. Translation of number seven, the mode of passion is born of unlimited desires and longings. O son of Kunti, and because of this, the embodied living entity is bound to material fruitive actions. ด้วยเหตุนี้สิ่งมีชีวิตในร่างจึงถูกพันธนาการอยู่กับการกระทำเพื่อผลทางวัตถุ So the, in the mode of passion people have very strong desires they want a lot of that and they want to satisfy their senses ในบุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับนี้เนี่ย
คือเขาเนี่ยจะมีความต้องการมากต้องการที่จะให้ความสุขกับประสาทของเขา So people in the mood of passion will be very active. They often work very hard and they're very ambitious. คนที่อยู่ในระดับตัณหาเนี่ยคือเขาจะมีความตื่นตัวอยู่ตลอดแล้วเขาจะทำงานหนักแล้วเขาจะมีความมุ่งมั่น And of course, their ambition is just for sense gratification, not for any really good purpose, but just for their own material pride. Of course, passion is a very popular word today, and it's often used. People are very fond of passion. They think passion means something good, something exciting. Something pleasing. The คำว่า passion นะคะในภาษาไทยเราจะเรียกว่าตัณหาซึ่งในเชิงภาษาอังกฤษเขาจะใช้กันมากนะคะว่าว่าสมมติว่าให้เรามีความสนใจในการทำอะไรอะไรอย่างนี้ให้เรามีความอยากที่จะทำ But we learn from the Bhagavad Gita that the mode of passion Often leads to the mode of ignorance, which means more suffering, more more darkness, more misery. And the result of actions in the mode of passion is that they end in distress. Just like happiness in the mode of passion, it has a beginning. In the beginning, it's like nectar, but quickly it changes and becomes like poison. Passion. Yes. Yes. So one has to be very careful. From the mode of passion, we want to go to the mode of goodness, not to the mode of ignorance. Text number eight describes. In the mode of ignorance. O son of Bharata, know that the mode of darkness, born of ignorance, is the delusion of all embodied living entities. The results of this mode are madness, indolence, and sleep, which bind the conditioned soul. So the mode of ignorance is the exact opposite of the mode of goodness. The mode of ignorance is darkness, but the mode of goodness is light, illumination. And the mode of ignorance is, is, is there's no knowledge, but in the mode of goodness, there's pure knowledge. And the result of the mode of ignorance is madness, but the result of the mode of goodness is is pure purification and relief from sinful activities. And in the mode of ignorance, people will be very lazy and sleep a lot. In the mode of goodness, people may not be very active, but they're very conscious and they're very aware. They're not doing nothing. 
they use their time in a proper manner, without passion. Okay. Now going on, text number 14 and 15 describes about death in the different modes. People will die in different conditions. Sometimes people will die in the mode of goodness, some people will die in the mode of passion, and others will die in the mode of ignorance. So text 14 says, when one dies in the mode of goodness, he attains to the pure higher planets of the great sages. Death in the mode of goodness means you would die just like devotees leave the body, they will hear the chanting of the holy name, somebody will be reading scriptures to them, they may even go to the holy place to leave the body. So when one can die in the mode of goodness, you go to the higher planets. You may become a demigod in your next life. And when one dies in the mode of passion, it takes birth among those engaged in fruitive activities. So die, who dies in the mode of passion? People who are, who are very busy, very working very hard, using all their time, trying to make more money. Maybe he's putting the money in the stock market, trying to get more money. Some people will go gambling to try to get more money and then they will have the heart attack when they lose the money, they will die. So that will be death in the mode of passion. Or someone may be driving their car and they're rushing to go home or they're rushing to go somewhere, they drive very fast and they have an accident and they're killed in the car accident. So such a person will take birth again, he'll come back into this kind of planet, the earth planet, where there's a lot of fruitive activities. And if somebody dies in the mode of ignorance, then he'll take birth in the animal body become an animal next life. Death in the mode of ignorance means somebody dies of alcohol or drugs, something like that. 
ตายในระดับอวิชชาหมายความว่าบุคคลที่ตายโดยการดื่มเหล้าหรือว่าถ้ากินยาเสพติดอะไรอย่างนี้แล้วก็ตาย So the different circumstances in which one meets death will influence the destination they get in the next life. Okay. So here's a nice chart. You can see how the modes of nature affect different people. The mode of goodness is the sense of happiness and knowledge, satisfaction, knowledge, and superiority. And the characteristic of the mode of goodness is knowledge and no sinful reactions. And the result of acting in the mode of goodness is you you makes you pious. And people in the mode of passion, they are very attached to the results of their work. And they have very strong material desires. And the result of working in the mode of passion and being in the mode of passion, misery. Yeah, we see we see people who are in the mode of passion. They're always unhappy. They're never happy. They're always miserable. And then people in the mode of ignorance. They're they're mad. They're lazy, and they sleep a lot. So these people are very foolish. People in the mode of ignorance are just foolish, mad, crazy people. Srila Prabhupada used to say, "Krishna consciousness is not for lazy people or crazy people." We have to bring people up to the mode of goodness. All right. Now going on, fourteen. Chapter fourteen, text number twenty-six. Another very important verse. Mamchayo vaya pichare na bhakti yoga na sevate sagunam samatityaitan brahma buya yakaupate. One who engages in full devotional service, unfailing in all circumstances. At once transcends the modes of material nature and thus comes to the level of Brahman.
So this sloka was a Lord Krishna's reply to a question by Arjuna. Arjuna wanted to know how to get over, how to transcend the modes of nature. So Lord Krishna told him, you have to engage in full devotional service. Don't, and you cannot fall down, you cannot give up, you cannot stop doing devotional service. You have to be fully engaged all the time. Then you come over the material nature, and once you get over the material nature, you come to the level of Brahman. Right. You become spiritual. Once you get free of the material nature, then you we become spiritual. Then from the level of Brahman, we can go on to understand Krishna. And we see there are three different realizations of Krishna. There's the Brahman, Paramatma and Bhagavan. The Brahman refers to the all-pervading energy of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the Supreme Brahman and we are tiny sparks of the Brahman. And everything is Brahman. Because it's all it's all Krishna's energy. But then there's another another realization of Krishna where one would realize the Paramatma, the super soul in the heart of everyone. So that is the localized form of Krishna. Paramatma is Krishna's own expansion, his personal expansion. But perfection of realization is to know Krishna as Bhagavan, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So you can see in the upper picture, a very nice picture, two great sages. One is Nar oh sorry, one is Narada Muni and the other is Angira, and they have come to visit this one devotee here, and the devotee is on the ground and he's sweeping insects out of the path. So this devotee who's on the ground sweeping the insects, previously he'd been a hunter and he was killing animals. 
านนี้เนี่ยที่คอยปักมดให้ออกจากทางเดินอยู่เนี่ยคือชาติที่แล้วเนี่ยเอ้ตะกอนเนี่ยตะกอนเนี่ยเขาเป็นนักล่าสัตว์ but Narada Muni gave him mercy and Narada Muni told him that if he didn't stop killing the animals he was going to suffer for all the animals he would have to be killed ก็ตอนแรกตอนที่เขาเนี่ยเป็นนักฆ่าสัตว์เนี่ยก็นารามุนีเนี่ยก็ให้เมตตาเขาบอโดยเวลาเจอเขาเนี่ยก็ได้สั่งสอนเขาบอกว่าจากการที่เธอฆ่าทุกสัตว์เนี่ยชาตินาเธอจะต้องไปเกิดเป็นสัตว์เหล่านี้ทั้งหมดนะก็เป็นการชดใช้ but the the hunter thought well how will I maintain myself if I don't hunt the animals I don't have any other way to maintain my life แล้วเขาก็จะบอกว่านักล่าสัตว์ตรงนี้เนี่ยเขาก็จะบอกว่าแล้วข้าเนี่ยจะจะใช้ชีวิตยังไงถ้าเกิดว่าไม่ทำอาชีพการล่าสัตว์เนี่ยข้าจะอยู่ยังไง But Narada Muni convinced him that he should become a devotee and so he he shaved his head and he took on the simple dress of a devotee and he sat down in front of a t o s i tree and began to chant the holy name น่ารักมุนีนะคะท่านก็ให้ความรู้แล้วก็ท่านก็บอกว่าเธอเนี่ยมาเริ่มสวดมนต์ก็ให้ประคำแล้วก็ให้เขาเนี่ยนั่งสวดต่อหน้าตุลสี And when he was doing that, then the people in the village heard how the hunter had become a devotee and now he was chanting Hare Krishna. So they all went to see him. They wanted to come and see him. And when they came to see him. They would bring some gift. They would bring some a, a fruit or a vegetable or some grains. And in this way, the hunter was able to maintain himself without having to kill animals. And he became such a nice devotee that when he saw the in insects on the path. He didn't want to stamp on them, and he was careful to sweep them out of the path so they didn't get hurt. So you can see how devotional service changes someone. From a hunter, they become a very nice devotee. Okay, so we'll go on to the last slide here from the chapter 1427, the last verse, another well-known verse. Brahmano hi pratistaham amritasya vayasya cha shasvatasya cha dharma sya sukasya ikantikasya cha. Lord Krishna is saying, and I am the basis of the impersonal Brahman, which is immortal, imperishable, and eternal, and is the constitutional position of ultimate happiness. เป็นสโลกสุดท้ายของบทนี้นะคะกล่าวว่าและข้าคือฐานของปรามันอันไร้รูปลักษ์ซึ่งไม่รู้จักตายไม่สูญสิ้นเป็นอมตะและเป็นสถานภาพพื้นฐานเดิมแห่งความสุขสูงสุด So some people think Brahman is superior to Krishna บางคนจะคิดว่า Brahman เนี่ย The 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 monas or the Mayavadis they think that when Krishna appears in the world, he's come from the Brahman, and the Brahman is the basis of Krishna. Mayavadi, 
but you can see in this sloka of Bhagavad Gita, it's the other way. Krishna says the Brahman comes from him. So the Brahman, the Brahma Jyoti, the rays of the Brahma Jyoti are coming from the body of Lord Krishna. And uh, from the rays of the Brahma Jyoti, you have the light of the sun and the moon. And this Brahman is described, it's immortal, imperish, uh, it's eternal, uh, uh, and it's imperishable, right? It's eternal, and it's the basis of ultimate happiness. If we get to the Brahman, we will experience happiness. So, when we come to the Brahman platform, we will experience that happiness. Everything is actually Brahman. Brahman means the energy of Krishna. And Krishna is also described as the Supreme Brahman. That was described by Arjuna in the 10th chapter. So we are tiny sparks of the Brahman, but Krishna is the Supreme Brahman. All right, we just have one last statement here from just to help us in the practice of Krishna about chanting Hare Krishna. In the practice of Krishna consciousness, the devotee engages all the gates, the whole body, to reach the state of pure goodness. So in the body we have gates just like we, you have gates in, a, in a, a city. In the old days there used to be gates which would surround the city. So the body also has gates. Gates, we have like the mouth, the nose, the eyes, the ears, they're gates. Then also the backside, the anus. So we, so we see in the body there are, uh, is it nine gates? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, nine gates.
Yeah, the, the anus and the, the organ for generating, for, to, to produce children, that's also a gate. So, a devotee wants to use all these gates to come to the level of pure goodness. And Prabhupada describes how we can do this. So for example, the devotee uses the eyes and the ears to read and hear the scriptures. He uses the nostrils to smell flowers offered to the Lord. And the mouth to taste food offered to the Lord. And to chant and to chant the Hare Krishna mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Right? This is the instruction about the modes of nature. All right, so now questions. Okay, ha, and you got in the any question today? Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj Dana Pranam, please accept my humble offices. Uh Ajanaha อ่าเค้าเรียกว่าความรู้เรื่องฮินดูของคนไทยอ่ะนะคะมันสืบเนื่องมาจากสนาตาสัมปทายะทีเนี้ยอ่าเค้าเชื่อกันว่าในพลัง
พลังเนี่ยคือเรียกว่าลาดีมีสักติพลังงานลาดี She gives the great. She's giving the greatest pleasure to Lord Krishna. Of course, all all devotees should be thinking about giving Krishna pleasure. But sometimes we see that some devotees are more expert than other devotees. Just like we say, all the gopis are the best devotees, but still among the gopis, some gopis are better than other gopis. And the best of all the gopis is Sri Mati Radharani. She gives the greatest pleasure to Krishna. And it's described that Lord Krishna was dancing Rasa Lila with all the gopis, right? He was dancing Rasa Lila with all the gopis, but at one point he left and went away with Radharani. So Lakshmi is, you know, she's a, of course she's spiritual energy, but you know, she has a different position. She's the goddess of fortune. She's the consort of Lord Narayan. So in Lord Narayan's in 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 the kingdom of Vaikuntha, where Lord Narayan resides, there's great opulence. Of course, the goddess of fortune, she's she bestows all the opulences for the pleasure of Lord Narayan. So, in the in Vaikuntha, they have the Lord Narayan is there with Lakshmi, and they're like the king and queen. And everyone else is their servants. So the devotees don't get really a chance to come near to Lord Narayan and to be with him much. But when Krishna is with the gopis and with the people in Vrindavan, he's with them all the time. So the Lord Krishna enjoys all different relationships with the people in Vrindavan. He has friends, and he has his parents, and he has his lovers. But in Vaikuntha, it's a servant-master relationship. So Lakshmi is an expansion from the gopis. 
ลักชมีเนี่ยเป็นภาคแบ่งแยกของโกปี The original female form is Srimati Radharani. And she expands herself as many different gopis. And some of these gopis, they become goddesses of fortune. Originally, Radha and Krishna were one, but they separated themselves eternally. Lord Krishna is the original form of the supreme personality of Godhead. That was shown in the eleventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Krishna showed first the universal form, then he showed his form as time. And then he showed the forearm form to Arjuna. And then, then he came back to his original form, the two-arm form. So the two-arm form is the supreme form, and the forearm form comes from the two-arm form. Are you understanding, Shaya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. And how about the? I I remember in a Krishna uh, Krishna book class, and uh, you ever been to say about Durga and Katayayani is a Kalangan Bung Tam Dei Wa Lai, Ajana. Understand? Hmm. He has to ask the mother other. Understand? Kalang Kalangan mother other other. Ma, from Radharani, is it? Yes. Just now, I told you that from Radharani, is from. มาเป็นพวกโอปีจากพวกโอปีก็เป็นพวกดูรกาแล้วเป็นบางคนก็เป็นลักชมีไปก็บางคนก็เป็นพลังงานเบื้องต่ำไปอ๋อโอเคแสดงว่าพี่เข้าใจถูกโอเคค่ะโอเคเข้าใจแล้วค่ะกุลมหาราช thank you ฮาริคริชนาฮาริคริชนาโอเค any other question there yes good day we got three more question okay from Yuna Mataji Yes, Shuna, what's your question? Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, dear devotees, please accept my humble obeisances, O Guru Sushita Prabhupada. Uh, Krishna is uh, considered to fulfill all desires, including material desires. But after all, we receive only what is due for us according to karma. If a person is entitled to wealth or a good family in this life by karma, uh, then they will come anyway. And if they are not, then is uh, Krishna useless to ask for material things? Thank you. <laughs> you understand, Archana? Mm. Not really, good. Well, the... she's, she's saying, you... if Krishna doesn't give us our material desires, then Krishna is no good. Krishna is useless. Okay. If Krishna is 
ไม่ให้ความต้องการที่เป็นวัตถุกับเราเนี่ยนั้นมันหมายความว่าพระชนาเนี่ยไม่มีประโยชน์หรือเปล่า Well, we have to understand, Krishna is not just simply our servant. We get the results of our own actions. And so you may want wealth, but if you don't do anything to deserve it, you won't get it. We are responsible for our own karma. Krishna is like the judge. Somebody comes to the court, and the judge may put him in jail. And somebody else comes to court, and the judge may give him money, give reward. So the man who's got put in jail, he said, "Oh, why you put me in jail? You give him money." No, you got put in jail because you did a crime. You have to get punished. So we're responsible, not Krishna. You cannot, you cannot blame Krishna when you suffer or when you don't get what you want. It's not Krishna's fault. It's our fault. Okay, next question. Okay, come to the next question. Okay, come to the next question. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, my humble obeisance. My question is regarding the mode of goodness. Can an atheist be in the mode of goodness? Because I hear sometimes people say that if you are a good person, that's okay. You don't have. It's not necessary that you become Krishna conscious. So I used to think whether uh, one can be a good person uh, without uh, being a devotee, something like that. And uh, also one more thing, like uh, sometimes people in the mode of goodness, they don't come to Krishna conscious, but other modes they come to Krishna conscious. Wanted to know why is it like that? Uh, yeah, these are my doubts inside. Thank you. โอเคคำถามของมาตาดีนะคะถามว่าเวลาบุคคลอยู่ในระดับแห่งความดีแล้วเนี่ยหรือว่าเวลาเขาเป็นคนดีแล้วเนี่ยมันได้ไหมจากการเขาแค่เขาเป็นคนดีได้ไหมไม่ต้องมาเป็นสาวกตรงนี้จะจะได้ไหมหรือว่าจะเป็นประโยชน์ไหมหรือว่าบางทีเนี่ยมาดีบอกว่าตัวมาตาดีเองก็เห็นว่าคนที่มาเป็นสาวกเนี่ยอาจจะไม่ได้เป็นคนที่อยู่ในระดับแห่งความดีจะเป็นบุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับอื่นเนี่ยจากเขาเนี่ยกลับไปมาเป็นสาวกตรงนี้เนี่ยเราเข้าใจได้ยัง So the man who says I'm a good person, I'm in the mode of goodness, means sometimes he's in the mode of goodness. Sometimes, sometimes he's honest. Sometimes he's truthful. But, but he also gets influenced by the mode of passion and the mode of ignorance. He's not just in the mode of goodness. Yeah, sometimes he gets angry, sometimes he gets greedy, sometimes he's lazy. 
บางครั้งเนี่ยเขาโมโหบางครั้งเขาก็มีความโลภบางครั้งเขาก็มีอารมณ์ so that's the nature of the modes of nature that they they compete with each other มันเป็นธรรมชาติของธรรมชาติวัตถุที่จะแข่งขันอยู่ตลอดเวลา And the second question, that why do sometimes people who are not in the mode of goodness become devotees? Because they they take advantage of the mercy of a devotee. The mercy of the devotee was there to everyone. They were giving their mercy also to the people in the mode of goodness. But sometimes people in the mode of goodness they're thinking, "No, I'm all right. I know everything. I have a good life. I'm happy. I don't need Krishna." แต่บางครั้งเนี่ยบุคคลที่อยู่ในระดับแห่งความดีเนี่ยเขาจะมีความคิดที่แบบว่าอชีวิตฉันก็ดีอยู่แล้วชีวิตฉันก็มีความสุขดีไม่เห็นจําเป็นต้องมีกฤษณาเลย But the person who is in the mode of passion or ignorance somehow he can understand his suffering and he takes the mercy of a devotee เราก็แต่ว่าบางครั้งเนี่ยคนที่อยู่ในระดับตัณหาหรือว่าวิชาเนี่ยเขาเนี่ยได้รับความทุกข์Yes. Next question. One more question, is it? Yeah, we got two more good day. One from Sarapunima and another one, Sri Devi Gorangina. All right. And one more from me. <laughs> Sarapunima, question. Hare Krishna, Sri Lakshmi Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri Lakshmi. All glories to you, Sri Lakshmi Maharaj, for the amazing classes. My question is, uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, why is it that we, we? I understand that the Father, Supreme Father, is Krishna. But I don't understand why we say that the supreme uh, mother is Mother Nature, not Sri Mati Radharani. t e n e t t o m a t h e r i na ha, b o w a m a t h e r i na, k a u a i wa t i guru mara b o w a p r a b i d a s u n g s u t o n g na ka ke Krishna, p e n l a n g tamne ko, p e n b i d a s u n g s u t o n g t u k m o n s h i w i t Ta t a m a i t i n g b o w a t a m a s h a t w a t u na, p e n m a n d a t a m a i m e p e n Sri Mati Radharani. Shrimati Radharani's business is to give pleasure to Krishna. She's not meant for giving birth to all of us. Material nature is to give birth to all of us. Shrimati Radharani is completely spiritual. Why would she have anything to do with this material world? So the material nature is there to provide a suitable body. Eight million four hundred thousand different species of life. They all come out from the material nature. Hmm. So, the duty of Radharani, her her service is different from the duty, the service of the material nature. s h r i m a t i Radharani's service is simply only for Krishna directly, nothing else to do with the material world. Radharani's service is simply only for Krishna 
พี่ของสิมาติรารันเนี่ยก็คือเป็นผู้รับใช้กฤษณาแต่แล้วก็ให้ความสุขกฤษณาแค่เพียงอย่างเดียวไม่มีหน้าที่อื่นใดโอเคสารพุนิมัสคำถามQuestion. Yes, you're right. The, the, uh, it's a rare scientist who is in the mode of goodness. Most scientists are not in the mode of goodness. A lot of modern science is concerned with sinful activities. 
พอเป็นนักวิทยาศาสตร์ส่วนน้อยนะคะที่เราจะจัดอยู่ในระดับแห่งความดีเพราะว่านักวิทยาศาสตร์ส่วนใหญ่แล้วเนี่ยก็จะจัดอยู่ในระดับว่า for example one devotee told me his sister was a scientist and she's working on birth control devices so that's sinful อย่างเช่นมีสาวคนนึงเนี่ยให้ตัวอย่างบอกว่าเออน้องสาวของผมเนี่ยเป็นนักวิทยาศาสตร์แล้วตอนนี้เนี่ยเขาก็กําลังพัฒนาเทคโนโลยีในด้านการคุมกําเนิดอยู่ซึ่งตรงนี้เนี่ยมันเป็นกิจกรรมบาปนี่ But we see that in the modern times scientists are given a lot of respect and people seem to listen to scientists more than anybody else it's a it's a qualification That somebody is educated. แล้วก็อีกอย่างหนึ่งก็คือพวกเขาเนี่ยแต่ว่าในโลกปัจจุบันเนี่ยผู้คนเนี่ยจะให้ความเคารพแล้วก็จะให้จะเชื่อฟังนักวิทยาศาสตร์เป็นจะส่วนใหญ่ It's unfortunate that a lot of science is used to destroy the planet and to do harm to the environment. แต่ว่าด้วยความอับโชคนะคะก็ที่การวิทยาศาสตร์การพัฒนาทางด้านวิทยาศาสตร์เนี่ยมันเป็นบางบางส่วนเนี่ยมันเป็นการทำลายโลกเป็นการทำลายธรรมชาติ Just like by science they invented motor cars but motor cars also create a lot of problem a lot of pollution เหมือนกับนักวิทยาศาสตร์ได้พัฒนาในการผลิตรถยนต์มอเตอร์คาร์เดินทางไปแล้วสุดท้ายปัญหาที่เกิดขึ้นก็คือความพิษหรืออากาศเป็นพิษภาวะโลกร้อนต่างๆ And then in, in agriculture to grow food they use a lot of chemicals the scientists have invented these different chemicals which they say will grow more food it's so not it's not good และในการการเกษตรก็เช่นเดียวกันค่ะซึ่งเขาเนี่ยคิดค้นสารเคมีหลายประเภทที่ทำให้พืชเนี่ยมีการเจริญเติบโตที่เร็วขึ้นซึ่งไม่เป็นไปอย่างธรรมชาติ But we see science also doing things like inventing vaccines to prevent people from getting COVID แล้วก็มันก็มีส่วนดีด้วยนะคะบางทีเนี่ยเขาก็ได้คิดค้นวัคซีนในการรักษาโรคต่างๆอย่างเช่นในปัจจุบันก็มีการวัคซีนที่ช่วยป้องกันในเรื่องของโควิด Or, or other kinds of vaccine to prevent you getting disease. And so, yeah, scientists, we know a lot of them are not really in the mood of goodness. But we do see that from science, people will become more philosophical. And from philosophy, then they can become devotee. So we try to preach to scientists, and we try to get them to believe in God and to understand there is God. Some people, some scientists are atheists, and some scientists are religious, pious. They believe in God. For people who are sunyavadis, sunyavadi, they don't believe in anything. Nothing is real, so they're not real either. So, what will be their destination? They will become a stone in the next life, or they will become a mountain. Some people, 
Because nothing is real, so they won't get a real body in the next life. And for the Mayavadis who say that Krishna is just a form of Brahman, then they will get the body of a tree, they will become a big tree and stand as a tree for a long time. So according to their thinking, they will get that type of body. But if you worship Krishna with love and devotion, then you can go and be with Krishna and serve Krishna. So we want to develop love for Krishna. All right, is there any other question? Uh, good Dev, even I have one small question, Good Dev. Oh, okay. Uh, where, where you mentioned the material nature, is this material nature mean Durga Devi, Guru Dev? Yeah, Durga is the personification of the material nature. Oh. She's the personification of the material nature, yes. Okay, good. And one more question I have is uh, about the realization that, as we mentioned, as you mentioned earlier, about Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagawan. For those who come to the level of Bhagawan, it that mean they have to uh, already pass the realization in Brahman and Paramatma. Then only they will come to the level of Bhagawan. No, they can go directly to Bhagavan. And Bhagavan realization includes Paramatma and Brahman. Just like when you take the lift, you can go to the top floor. You don't need to go through every floor. You, you just simply go in the lift and quickly you go to the top. So you can go directly to Bhagavan realization, serve Krishna by Bhakti Yoga. And Bhakti Yoga will include Brahman realization and Paramatma realization. It's included within ba Bhagavan realization. Translate. Okay. คือเราจะต้องผ่านการรู้แจ้งระดับบรัมมานก่อนระดับบรัมมานแล้วเราถึงจะไปถึงระดับองค์พระกวาดในการรู้แจ้งพระกวาดหรือเปล่านะคะเ